Number 10, the lightsaber. The lightsaber is the epitome of versatile weaponry, able to deflect blaster shots, cut steel, and slice through flesh like warm butter. The blade of the lightsaber is so hot it appears to instantly cauterize wounds, as evidenced by the sheer lack of blood throughout the films. Scene after scene, Jedi and Sith alike are seen shaving limbs off enemies, but not a single drop of blood is seen. Except that one time, after Obi-Wan slices an Aqualish bar patron's arm off. This is the only time blood is drawn from a lightsaber in the entirety of the films. A production mistake or a biological insight into the boiling point of Aqualish blood. We'll never know. Number 9. Luke the Ventriloquist among abilities like lightsaber dueling and the force, Luke Skywalker is also an up-and-coming ventriloquist. While usually talking normally, Luke manages to sneak in a tad of it and show off every once in a while when what he said just wasn't good enough. He shows off several times during Return of the Jedi with the lines, if he even exists and come on, both being spoken without a hint of movement from his lips. Truly a soon-to-be marvel. On second thought, these lines may have just been edited in afterwards, but I'd like to give them the benefit of the doubt. Number 8. E.T. Aliens During the Senate meeting in The Phantom Menace, sharp-eyed fans will notice some very familiar aliens. These long-necked, anorexic, testicle-esque aliens are the spitting image of E.T.'s race in the aptly named movie, E.T. the Extraterrestrial. While intended as a nod to Steven Spielberg's work, it also made the race canon under the name Asagonians, who later are featured in several other Star Wars books, which since then have been declared non-canon. Number 7. George Lucas Cameo While old Georgie was able to resist the temptation of entering his own films for two feature lengths, he broke a streak and appeared as a background character, well, I guess foreground, technically, during Revenge of the Sith. George's cameo Baron Papanoida is standing mid-frame, in front of Palpatine's private box. George also fit three of his children into the series. Jet Lucas filled the role of the Jedi in training Zet Jukasa, Amanda Lucas played Senator Ter Tenniel, and Katie Lucas was cast as another senator named Chi Ikwe Papanoida. Number 6. Let's Players while the age of Let's Players seemed to emerge around late 2009 with every squeaker and quickscoper opening a YouTube channel, it appears to have started several years ago. While Obi-Wan and Anakin visit Coruscant Bar, on the leftmost screen you can see actual footage from the N64 game Star Wars Episode I Racer. This is quite an interesting easter egg, as it implies that this particular galaxy got the game 300 years before the N64 was even released. Number 5. The Ewoks CGI is an amazing thing, and when used correctly, it can bring impossible scenes to life. Star Wars is infamous for having films on polar opposites of using too much CGI and using little to none. Many shots in the original trilogy used very little CGI due to budget constraints, meaning they had to be filmed practically and physically. This leads to some very odd post-production moments. A shining example of this is seen in those fuzzy Ewoks, while in today's age it would seem obvious to make CGI versions of the Ewoks and edit them into scenes, Lucasfilms actually made Ewok suits and hired vertically challenged actors to fill them. In post-production, the guy responsible for hiding this fact must have been taking a coffee break, as the actors are clearly visible through the eye holes in several shots. Number 4. Concussions Hopefully the Empire has a good health insurance plan, considering all the concussions their workers are getting. Shortly after the trash compactor scene in Episode 4, stormtroopers enter the room that previously contained C-3PO and R2-D2, only for one of the stormtroopers to hit his head. In the original version of the films, this was obviously a production mistake that they failed to edit out, but in the remastered version, Lucasfilms added a cartoonish hit sound as an homage to their mistake. Nobody ever accused a stormtrooper of being well-coordinated or graceful, as evidenced by their constant missing of shots. But a very similar injury happened to one of the deadliest Mandalorian assassins, Jango Fett. Either Jango doesn't board those ships very often, or he really pissed off his pilot. Number 3, 1138. The number 1138 is a recurring easter egg found throughout the entire series of Star Wars. 
Dedicated fans of George Lucas's work will instantly recognize this number from his very first movie, THX 1138. In A New Hope, Luke claims that he is transferring Chewbacca from cell block 1138, and later in the film in the hangar control room, THX 1138 is shown on a screen behind C-3PO. In The Empire Strikes Back, General Recon orders Sen Rogues 10 and 11 to Section 38. It is inscribed in Return of the Jedi on a helmet, The Phantom Menace on a droid, and in Attack of the Clones in LEDs on a pilot's helmet. While Revenge of the Sith doesn't have any outright spoken or visual source of the reference in the film, if the numbers 1138 are punched into the remote control on the options menu, a short clip of Yoda breakdancing can be viewed. What a cool easter egg, honestly. Number 2. The Millennium Falcon The Millennium Falcon is definitely considered a staple of the original trilogy, but did you know it also made an appearance in Attack of the Clones? As Anakin and Padme dock on Naboo, you can clearly see the Millennium Falcon docking just below them, or as it was named before Han acquired it, the Stellar Envoy. Luckily Han changed the name when he took over ownership. The Stellar Envoy sounds like something out of a bad fan fiction. Number 1. The Mandalorian Symbol Now, for something more relevant to the current Star Wars franchise, in the trailer for The Force Awakens, it is very brief, and in a blink you may miss it. But as the new leads walk into the courtyard of a colorfully decorated building, a black Jiang skull is printed on the wall above them. This skull is the symbol of the Mandalorians, a group of bounty hunters and mercenaries once under the lead of Boba Fett. This hidden peek gives an insight that the Mandalorians may provide a very heavy role in the plot of the upcoming movie, and perhaps even the upcoming trilogy. Well, I guess we won't find out until December 18th. 